What's up everybody, welcome to MyPixel. As always, it's awesome to have you here. If you're new to the channel, then welcome. Today, let's tackle a commonly asked question. How do I make my character do a double jump? Double jumps are everywhere in all types of games and the vision that you have for your game may depend on it. So let's go ahead and make it happen. So here we have a little platformer demo that I put together. Right now the character can move left and right and jump up and down just like you'd expect from your standard platformer. So we can go ahead and take a look real quick. And you can see that right, left right works, jump up and down, I'm able to bang into the walls properly, hit my head, things like that. All the collisions work as we expect it to. Pretty standard. So we can jump out of there. And then we can go ahead and jump into our hero, I, mean, I called him hero in here, and the script that goes with him. So the code that's currently in here is going to ensure that this player can only jump when he's standing on the ground. That is, he can't jump infinitely or he can't fall down into a pit and then infinite jump his way out of it. So we have things like here, if we press the space bar, then we're able to jump if our on-ground variable is true. We set our on-ground variable to true if is on floor is true. And we set the on-ground variable to false if basically if is on floor is not true then it's false. So if it's false then we set the on-ground variable to false. Now some of you may recognize this code from the platformer tutorial series. For those of you who don't recognize the code or don't know how it works, then you may want to watch the Godot 3 platformer tutorial series that's also on this channel. Uh, that'll get you a better understanding of what we're doing here today. If you watch up until about part 4 in this series, you should be able to understand most of the code that you're seeing here right now. So you can see here that... I'm using the on-ground variable to track if the character is on the ground or not. Now while this variable is not necessary in this current implementation as, as it is right now, featuring only a single jump, it will eventually become necessary when we do the coding for the double jump. So we want to make our character double jump, triple jump, or maybe even more. For that, we're going to need some kind of variable to track the number of times that we've jumped. So if we go back up where we're going to declare our variables, we can create a new one here. We'll call this var jump count and we'll set it by default equal to zero. Now that we have our variable, let's go ahead and find where we want to modify it. We can go down into where we hit the space button and it makes the character jump. So we're going to do this a little bit differently. So let's just go ahead. We can comment this out for now. And then add our new code. We just leave this old code commented out just in case something doesn't work and we need to uh, get back to something that we know works and test. We have it right here and we can re-enable this very quickly. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create an if statement. We're going to say if jump count is less than 2, then we want to add 1 to our jump count variable. We also need to make sure that we actually do the jump. So the velocity.y equals jump power is the same thing that you see up here. And then we'll go ahead and in the same way that you see up there in the commented code or the code commented out, we're going to set the on ground variable equal to false. Now let's go down to the is on floor check. So if we're standing on the floor, we want to set or we want to be able to do the full double jump again. And so if we've jumped a bunch of times and we've added to our jump count, we want it to reset when we hit the floor. So very easily. What we do is we just say under the if is on floor. So if the is on if we are on the floor, then the jump count 
we'll set that back equal to zero. If not, then we're in the air, and then we're just going to do all the things that we would usually do. So let's run our game and try and test it out. Okay, see here. Okay, let's try. Let's try out the double jump. One, two. One, two, three. No, that doesn't work, right? So our character double jumps properly. Cool. All right, we can run all over here. Our double jump is pretty awesome. I don't know. Looks looks pretty looks pretty good to me, right? That's that's pretty quick. Now we can go on feeling great about ourselves and everything we accomplished and then move on to the next phase in our gaming or our next game feature. But can we really do that? All right, I'm sure by the tone of my voice, you've guessed that we do have a problem, right? So we have a problem that might not be, or you might not have it come up immediately when you're just test playing your game. Sometimes you don't discover problems like this for a while because really many of us are mostly focused on getting the game to play the way we want it to play and not so much focused on some of the many ways that other people may try to experiment with our game and end up possibly breaking it or taking advantage of different gameplay bugs that we haven't noticed ourselves. That being said, the problem is this. If we jump normally, we're able to make one more jump in midair before we can't jump anymore. Right? So jump, we can jump one more time. All right, so that works fine. However, if we run off a ledge, we're able to make two jumps in midair before we can't jump anymore. So let's try it out. So let's go ahead and find a ledge. Nice big one here. So I'm going to run off the ledge, jump once, jump twice. Now, while this may be just fine with some of you, this is not how I define a double jump. My idea of a double jump is only being able to jump twice if you start from the ground. Though maybe some of you disagree and you want to be able to do one mid-air jump. Maybe a little bit something like... Let's get back up here. Let's see if we can get up here. Something like... You're going to run off this ledge, fall off, and then maybe you get one mid-air jump so you can quickly save yourself. But regardless of whether the player starts the jump from the ground or runs off the ledge first, we can do it. So let's go ahead, jump back into our code, and take a look how we can make that happen. Now to do this, we're going to have to track whether or not we were on the ground in the previous frame. This is where the on-ground variable comes into play. This on-ground that we're tracking that I said wasn't actually necessary in the beginning, but it will eventually become necessary. Well, now it's going to get its time to shine. Because if we only use the isOnFloor function that we have here, we're limited to only being able to see if the player is currently on the ground or not, but don't know anything about whether if the player was on the ground or not in the previous frame, right? So isOnFloor is going to let us know if we're touching the ground now, but it has no knowledge of whether we were touching on the previous frame or not. For that, we need to use our own variable, which is why we have this on ground here, so that we can differentiate between if the player actually jumped to get into the air or to jump to leave the ground, or if he walked off a ledge, and that's the reason he's not standing on the floor or on the ground anymore. So let's go ahead and make some edits to this code, and then we'll explain, or and then I'll go into explaining some of it afterward. So. Once again, I will just com comment out some of the code here. Uh, let's comment out that one. Okay, let's just start with that. So we're going to say if on ground equals or is equal to false on ground equals true and jump count equals zero. We're going to head, going to go ahead, comment this out, and we're going to add something pretty similar. So 
we're going to say if on ground is equal to true, then we want to set on ground equal to false. And we're going to set jump count equal to two. All right, so what did I just do? Let me go ahead and explain. So this first section with the if is on floor, we're going to look at it here. Okay, so what this says is that if we were in the air the previous frame and we have touched the ground, then set our on ground state to true and then reset the jump count. This actually is not the important part though, and we can get away with, or we could have gotten away with not modifying this section at all, and it would still have worked. But now that we have this, the code is more optimized because now we are only setting the on ground and jump count variables once when we come out of the air and we finally land on the ground, and not every frame that we are on the ground, right? So as it is right now, this only this this bit of code is only going to get triggered if we were in the air before and we finally landed on the ground before if we just had it like this every single frame when your character is on the ground whether he's standing or running this bit of code is going to keep on executing it's not a big deal and you probably wouldn't notice it any but i would like to say that this version of code is slightly more optimized now that aside, the important part is what is inside of this else block. So if on ground or our on ground variable is true, the previous frame, and now the is on floor check says we're not on the ground, right? So this says we are on the ground. Else is basically if we're not on the ground, then we must have walked off a ledge. This is because we set the on ground variable to false when we jump before we do the is on floor check. So that, that's up here. When we jump, we actually set the on ground equal to false. So if we jump, on ground will equal false before the is on floor check. And this if statement here will not be able to execute its code, right? Because on ground is equal to false. If it's false, then nothing is going to happen here. If we walk off a ledge though, then the on ground will still equal true right before the is on floor check and the if statement can execute its code. Right, so if we jump, this is going to equal false, nothing's going to happen. If we were standing on the ground and then we fell off the ground, as in we walk off the ledge, then we would have had true all the way up until this check and because it was true, then we would be able to execute this code. So then we have the jump count equals two here. Now, what we did here is we just set the jump count, we set it manually to the maximum number of jumps that we were going to let our player jump in the first place. So in the beginning, we just decided we we're going to give our player a double jump. So that's two jumps. And you see here, if jump count is less than two, then we can still jump. If it is equal to two, then we have to stop jumping. So what we did right here is we effectively made it so that we can't jump anymore. Let's go ahead and test it out. Okay, let's just test it first. Let's make sure our double jump still works from the ground. So one, two. Okay, good, we can double jump. And then if we run off a ledge, we need to make sure we can't jump anymore. So let's go ahead and find that nice ledge we used before. Okay, and as I run off the ledge, I'm going to spam this jump this jump key. All right, no jumps if if you heard me hitting the space key. I know you can't actually see what I'm pressing, but you're just going to have to take my word for it. I can't jump at all if I run off a ledge. Everything works. Awesome. Now let's say that you still want to allow the player to jump one time after running off a ledge. In that case, you can do that by just modifying what the jump count is manually set to. We had set it to 2 earlier, but if we go ahead and we set it to 1, now we'll be able to jump one more time before we can't jump anymore. So let's go ahead and test that out. 
we'll just change this to a 1 and then run our game again. Let's jump over some things just because we can. We'll double jump up here. And there you, you see that? Here we go. We ran off a ledge and we're able to make that one jump. Can we make any more? Let's try. Let's spam the jump key again. Alright, so <laughs> if you could hear me frantically, frantically hitting the space button there, I can't jump any more times. But I can do that one jump after I run off a ledge. Now that we've seen how all of that works, you can feel free to play with the numbers and implement as many mid-air jumps as you like. And that's going to do it for today, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to thank you all for watching and I hope you found this helpful. If you like this video, please give it a like and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. The sprite, source code, and everything else that I've used in this tutorial today is available for download on my Patreon page. So if you want to check that out and also support the channel, the link is in the description. And with that, we're going to call it a day. So thanks again to everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next one real soon. Take it easy.